Yesterday, Google released Android 16 Beta 3.1. This update doesn't include any new features, but if you want to get your hands on Android 16 with a stable-like experience with minor issues and bugs, I think now it's the right time, so let's talk about Beta 3.1. Before starting, I have some good news. I got my hands on the Pixel 9a. It's a fully working unit. I've been using it as my daily driver for one day, and I will start my full review for this phone immediately after this video. So if you have any questions about the Pixel 9a, please let me know in the comments, and I will try to answer them in my full review. So let's get back to Android 16 Beta 3.1. Even though the update size is very small, it's only 6.67 megabytes, on the Pixel 9 Pro XL, but it comes with a massive number of improvements when it comes to the performance and animations, and the build number is PP22.250221.013. And now let's talk about my experience with Beta 3.1. Once I installed this update, I felt an immediate improvement when it comes to the performance and animations. It feels exactly the same as Marsh Update, and the app launching speed is much faster. I also did notice that the picture-in-picture -picture transition is very smooth as you see here it works perfectly well and this is one of the signs that says how good is the animations on the phone and as you see here the app launching speed is much faster so let's try another app i don't have any apps running in the background by the way so let's try one more app, Facebook, for example. As you see, everything opens instantly on the screen, even though the applications are not running in the background. When it comes to the battery, it's too early to assess because I've been using the Pixel 9a as my daily driver since this update came out, but it looks promising to me. And when it comes to the Geekbench scores, I'm getting pretty much the same numbers as March 25 update and also beta 3. It's ranging between 4600 to 4700 and the single core score is 1927 so it's not bad even though this update doesn't include any new features but google gave access to older pixel models to some of the features that were originally available on the pixel 9. the first one is under settings and then security and privacy. When you go to the device lock and then fingerprint unlock and then fingerprint unlock one more time, you will see that the screen of fingerprint unlock toggle is now available on the Pixel 6 Pro, same as the 7 Pro and the 8 Pro based on my testing. But unfortunately, it doesn't work on any of the devices if my always on display is turned off. So hopefully it's only a bug and we will see it working in the future. Another feature that was only available on my Pixel 9 Pro XL, but now I found it on the Pixel 8 Pro. It's under settings and then display and touch and then screen timeout. Now I have a toggle called adaptive timeout and the description says automatically turns off your screen if you are not using your device. The third one also made its way to the Pixel 8 Pro which is located under battery. Now we have the same battery health page of the Pixel 9 Pro XL as I showed you on my previous video but unfortunately it doesn't show the battery capacity. All you get here is the articles and the charging optimization. When it comes to my 6 Pro and 7 Pro, none of them got the battery health page. And lastly, after this update, my Pixel 9 Pro XL battery capacity improved from 98% to 99. So I'm not sure which number is more accurate. And lastly, let's take a look at the release notes of beta 3.1 to see the bug fixes. The first one is fixed an issue that caused the system settings app to crash repeatedly on launch if the system language was set to a language other than English, fixed an issue that caused the screen brightness to oscillate between an app-specified brightness setting and the automatic system-specified or user-specified brightness settings, fixed the performance issue that was causing excessive battery drain from high CPU load, and finally fixed the performance issue that sometimes caused memory leaks in the system server. Beside beta 3.1, I would like to talk briefly about the wallpapers by in-depth tech reviews app. Some people had a problem with the support email when they try to send me a message it fails because the mailbox was broken, but I did fix this problem. So if you have any issue with the app, please send me an email and I will reply back to you. Another thing is some people, when they install the app, the wallpapers don't load, giving an error message. If you encounter this issue, please use any free VPN 
to let the app work and I'm not sure why this is happening. It happens only in certain areas and I'm investigating this issue with the developer. Beside this, if you like any of the wallpapers you see in this video or any of my previous videos, they are now part of the collection and the Google Play Store download link is in the description below. So that's everything I wanted to talk about when it comes to Android 16 Beta 3.1. This is the most stable Android 16 build ever and I think it's good enough to install on your daily driver. It gives you the same performance and animations of March 25 update which are impressive already and it doesn't have any major bugs or show stoppers. So that's pretty much it for today. That's everything you need to know about Android 16 Beta 3.1. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more.